Hi there, my name's Glenn Clark, and a few weeks ago I posted on social media an example CCNA question from my CCNA book. So I wanted to go over the question just because I got a lot of feedback that it was a great question, but people were wondering how I came up with the answer. So in this episode of SERPVIDS, what I wanted to do is go over how I'll get that answer. Let's first take a look at the question. The question is, you need to configure the IP address of a switch that is on the same network as a router with the IP address of 200.50.72.143 forward slash 27. What IP address would you assign to the switch? A, 200.50.72.160, B, 200.50.72.129, C, 200.50.72.128, and D, 200.50.72.103. What I want you to do is pause the video and take a look at those options and come up with an answer. Once you've come up with an answer, then you can unpause the video and we'll go over how I would get the answer. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is take a look at what the goal of the question is. This question is not about routers and switches, even though those devices are included in the question itself. The question is about determining which of those IP addresses listed in the choices is on the same network as the IP address given in the question. So it's a subnetting example. The first thing that we want to do to get our answer is determine the different network blocks or the different subnets for each of the networks. So let's take a look at how we would do that. So to determine the network ranges, the first thing that we want to do is take a look at the IP address that was given in the question. So the question has 200.50.72.143 forward slash 27. So I write that down. The next thing that I do is I look at the IP address given and I look at the value of the first octet and I ask myself, okay, what class address is this? And seeing that it starts with the number 200 in the first octet, that's a class C address. Class C addresses range from 192 to 223. A class C address would have a subnet mask that is 255.255.255.0, which is 24 bits are enabled in the subnet mask. In this example, we can see that there's 27 bits. So we know that this is a subnetted example. It's building off the defaults of the class C address. So the next thing I would do is I would write out the subnet mask in binary, listing out the 27 bits that make up the subnet mask. So I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot, and we need three more, one, two, three, and five host bits. So that's our subnet mask in this example. So to figure out the network IDs, the next thing that we got to do is figure out the increment value. This is a bit of a shortcut. Instead of going through an entire subnetting example, we're going to get right to the punch, which is the increment value is the value of the last bit that's been enabled in the subnet mask. So when I take a look at this subnet mask written out in binary, we can see the third bit in the last octet is the last bit that's been enabled within the subnet mask. So then what you do is you look at, okay, well, what's the value of that bit? The value of that bit is 32. So 32 becomes the increment value that we can use to calculate each of the network IDs in this subnetted example. So how that works is now what we do, now that we know the increment is 32, now we start listing out the network IDs. Now because it's a class C address is what we start with, every network ID starts with that first three octets. So we do 200.50.72, dot zero would be the first network ID. And then what's going to happen is that last octet is going to increment by 32 for each network ID. So what I do here is I kind of write out like a, a kind of almost like a timeline so I can visualize the placement of these numbers. So we're starting at zero, the next network ID 
would be 32. The next network ID would be 64. The next network ID after that would be 96. Then we want 128 would be the next one. And then 160 would be the next one. And you would continue on. But we have enough written down to help us figure out the answer for this question. So uh, looking at the original IP address that we're working with, which is the 200.50.72.143, what I would do next is figure out which subnet does the .143 system exist in. And what you do is you'll look at this um, kind of timeline here and you picture, okay, 143 is about right here. So it's in the 128 subnet. So the answer to our question is gonna be a number within that subnet. So from 128 to 159, is the network range that we're dealing with. 160 would be the, the network ID of the next network range, right? So we take a look at our, our choices and we narrow down which of those numbers fall between 128 and 159. So we look at choice A. Choice A is 200.50.72.160, so it's too high. It is the value of the next network ID, so that is not the correct answer. 129 is choice B. Uh, 129 looks good. So before I check that off and choose that as the correct answer, I would still look at the other two choices just to verify. Choice C is 128.128. .128. Um, again, that's in the same network block, but because it's the actual uh, first value within the network block, it's actually reserved for the network ID. So although it's in the correct network block, it's um, you're not allowed to assign it to a system on the network, right? Because it's already reserved for the network ID. So choice C is not an answer. And choice D, if I look at choice D, 103, 103 is below the number of 128. So 103 would actually kind of uh, appear in this previous subnet, right? So it's not the correct answer either because it's on a different subnet. So looking at our choices, 200.50.72.129, which is choice B, is the correct answer to this question. So in this video, we showed you how to answer subnetting questions on the Cisco CCNA exam using the increment shortcut.